was um, sentenced also in 2008 as against a woman called Brianna Waters, who was sentenced to six years of prison for an arson attack against the university building in Washington state. She is, I think, 32 or maybe 33 years old now. She has a daughter of three years and, and um, is a violent teacher who, who used to live in California. And what describes her also is that she used to be the partner of one of the suspects in, in these arson cases who is um, still being one, who is one of these four that is, are still looked for. She was arrested in 2005 and later released. Now she's serving a prison term. And the interesting thing about this case is that she herself says she's innocent. She, she was not involved in these attacks at all, but she was accused of someone who was also charged in the same case. And she was charged to be the lookout in an arson attack against the building of the University of Washington that um, comprised research um, facilities about uh, genetically modified trees. This, um, this charge could have led to a sentence of up to 35 years of prison. Um, and, and the interesting thing that I didn't know about the US legal system before is that um, if you are accused of something and uh, you plead that and you're saying you're, you're not guilty, you're innocent of the charge, then, then you might receive this full sentence of, of so many years. But if you agree to a deal with, with the prosecutor and the, and the court, then you can consider re reduce the possible sentence, either because you um, accept that you are guilty, which, which is um, something I still don't understand why being guilty reduces your sentence, but that works. And the other more important part is that um, if you agree to, to testify about other suspects, then this will also extremely reduce your sentence. And this is what happened in this case. Brianna Water said she's innocent, she doesn't have to do anything with the attacks, but to other people who also were facing um, a minimum of 30 years of prison, um, testified about her and said she was involved and, and the res result was that um, one was then facing only three to five years and the other five to seven years of prison. Um, this is basically an invitation to lie about other people. And when you do, um, you will get a much lesser sentence, which um, is um, not a very nice thing to do, obviously. But then on the other hand, if you face 35 years or 50 years or hundreds of years in prison, then you are told, if you tell us this and that story, you might end up with just five or 10, I think, it's very hard to point fingers. The result, however, is very hard. In this case, it's, it's Brianna Waters being in prison who, who said there is no evidence other than these um, testimonies and, uh, and, uh, and no other evidence that, that actually proves her to be involved. In the United States, and that I think is also very, very special here, is that there is a, a general atmosphere of fear. I think nobody of us would be surprised to hear about that. Already here, I talk to a lot of people who tell me, I'm scared to look at your website, I'm scared to call you, I'm scared to Google certain terms because I know all of this is being monitored. But in the US, I think this is, this is many times harder and many more tense. Um, there's, there's no fly lists that when you ever get targeted as, as somehow involved in suspicious activities, you may not be able to fly. There is um, one million people on the so-called terrorism watch list who, who have some kind of consequences. And, and it's very difficult to detect how you get to be um, on these lists. And, and it's even more difficult and practically impossible with legal uh, methods to get out of this again. So the result is that most people don't dare to, for example, um, express support when other people are concerned. Uh, a different case um, from the United States, apart from, from this, this green scare, oh, and this is also something that I thought was really quite amazing, that is, um, that is an anonymous ad uh, placed in different um, big uh, papers in the United States. Um, um, which concerns the United New York uh, Stock Exchange and, and how this is being um, threatened by terrorism. The next case um, that I would like to talk about is the case against the Critical Art Ensemble, which some of you may have heard about. It's, um, it's a case that, was, that became known in 2004 when the Joint Terrorism Task Force detained the artist and professor Steve Kurtz of the Critical Art Ensemble, which is an art and theater collective. 
And what happened is that um, he was at home with his wife and, and she suddenly died during the night of a heart failure. He called the emergency number, emergency doctors came and they saw that there was material for an exhibition on biotechnology and, he, and, and, and the doctors called the police. Police instantly started a bioterrorism investigation, seized his computers, the exhibition that was planned to, to go um, in a museum in the next days, um, which included petri dishes and, and bacteria and many things that were considered um, possibly terrorist dangers. All of this just because his wife had died, it's not because he was, he was actually um, monitored with anything considered terrorist. Um, and, and was quite public about his art and exhibitions also in the past. His, his wife's body was confiscated during this investigation. Kurtz was released after 22 hours and later it was found that all material was harmless. Um, when the terrorism charges were dropped after a while, um, an investigation on a charge called mail and wire fraud was started instead and, and this um, can lead up to 20 years of prison. Um, the Critical Art Ensemble is rather well known for exhibitions, books and public debate on issues such as um, GMO, biotechnology, but also electronic civil disobedience and digital resistance. Um, there's many books they have written that are free for download on their website. What you're seeing up there is, um, is a picture to a film that was um, made by um, Lynn Hirschman, um, which is called Strange Culture, which is a great film that I advise you to see whenever you can. It's a mix of documentary and fiction about this case um, and, and extremely um, good to see. It describes very well the kind of fear that is created around a terrorism case um, when, when people are being called to testify against someone they know who has been arrested for terrorism charges, for example, and what it does to you and, and for your life when, when something like this just kind of drops on you. Similarity to, to Andre Holmes' case um, in this case is that it's a critical researcher who was, who was concerned and um, the case has, has been dismissed now in April of this year, but until then, um, I think uh, Steve Kurtz's life was focusing on terrorism more than on his um, other activities. This takes us to France. France has a new phenomenon, the, um, the ultra-left. In November of this year, just one and a half months ago, 150 special police forces stormed a farm in a little village of 350 inhabitants in Tarnac. And there were raids also in Paris, in Rouen, in Limoges and Metz. Ten people were detained. Um, and four days later, this, this detention, this first detention after arrest can take up to four, four days. And four days later, five of them were formally arrested and five others were released. One of them was the mother of one of the arrested. And they were charged, the five who were arrested, with criminal conspiracy with terrorist intentions. The accusation is uh, property damage against the French train company SNCF, which caused delays for trains, and they were using what is called grapnels to damage the overhead contact wire. It's a kind of, of metal instrument that is hung over the overhead wires, and when the train goes in, this causes the wires to break and to come down, and then the train can't go on. Three days before the arrests um, was the night when the Castor transport with nuclear waste um, was moving from France to Germany. You may remember this in the news. Um, and um, then such an attack took place. And another had, had also taken place in October, which caused delays of high-speed trains, the TGV. Um, and um, in, the, in the second of these, of these incidents, on the 8th of November, um, the traffic of regional trains in the north of Paris was the result. The French, um, no, the Italian philosopher Giorgio Agamben published uh, a text about the arrests in Liberation, which is um, a, a leftist liberal daily paper in France, and I would like to quote from this text. As for the result, one might expect that investigators found weapons, explosives and Molotov cocktails on the farm in Milvash. Far from it. 
the SDAT, that's the Special Terrorism um, Police, SDAT officers discovered documents containing detailed information on railway transportation, including exact arrival and departure times of trains. <laughs> In plain French, an SNCF train schedule. But they also confiscated climbing gear. In simple French, a ladder, such as one might find in any country house. On the 2nd of December, um, some three weeks later, three of the remaining five were released um, and now still in detention is the so-called leader of this um, criminal organization with terrorist intentions who is called Julien Coupa and his partner Eldune. The leader still faces up to 20 years in prison now with this charge. And, um, just two days ago, he had an appeal in, in court and was denied release. Also here, the reason, the reason given by the prosecutor and the Minister for Internal Affairs is anarchist political ideas and um, contact to protest activities. There was an observation going on for six months before the arrests and some asked questions like if they were having this observation going on against these people, how would they manage to do these attacks against the train companies and nobody has answered that so far. Um, they were not actually caught in these attacks, they were just accused of having taken part in them. No weapons were found, so far no evidence for participation in the sabotage became known. Instead, um, like I said, the train schedules, ladders, bolt cutters or iron parts were found. Also, it was um, mentioned in the arrest warrants that, uh, that the accused took part in a demonstration against the summit about immigration in Vichy earlier this year. <coughs> also, it is mentioned several times that there is a book um, which uh, was possibly written by Julien Coupa and, and it can be obtained legally by also I think through Amazon or at least in bookstores but, but having um, possibly written this book or actually having this book at home and having read it um, is, is used as evidence against the suspects. It's interesting to, to understand that in April of, of this year, the Minister of Eternal Affairs talks about uh, the danger of anarcho-autonoms and the new ultra-left. Before, she also theorized about the danger of a revival of armed struggle in Paris or France at such. Um, there is a wide public debate in France going on. There is another similarity here also with the case against André Holmes since one of the suspects, the leader of the organization, is actually a, f a philosopher um, himself and, and closely tied to, um, to, to uh, elite university for social science in Paris. There is a lot of, of debate um, amongst philosophers about this. There is an open letter and a petition um, in his support signed by many academics. And there is a public debate in, in the media about this. Um, what is terrorism? A debate that we had in Germany about a year ago also and which keeps coming back. It is said that in times of the attacks of Bombay, is, is these, uh, these sabotage activities against trains, is that terrorism? This is one of the posters um, being done in support of, of, the, of the suspects. There is also an open letter by the, by the parents of those who are accused who, who protest against um, their, their children being made to terrorists without any visible evidence actually being there. It's maybe also interesting to note that, um, that this took place in this very little village somewhere in the middle of nowhere where um, since 2002 young people came to, to this lonely area that was more and more deserted and uh, opened a little grocery store, reactivated a farm and mostly concentrated on, on political activity, yes legal open political activity plus living in this area and um, taking care of themselves basically. The similarities, like I said, I think are quite, quite obvious. And my time is running short. Um, I'm coming with this, I'm coming to, this is one of the arrests in that case. Um, coming to cases in Germany that I want to quickly um, just um, mention. There was a case, um, a very similar case in Germany that was started um, in 1999, also involving these grapnels, these metal things on the overhead wires of trains. Um, relating to Castro transports of nuclear waste. 
Um, that took place in 1996 and 1997, and then the result was um, one of the well-known paragraph 129A investigations, raids in 1992, 